After watching this video, you should have a fundamental understanding of how you can look at the structure of a molecule that's a base and relate that to the relative basicity of that compound as compared to other compounds that are structurally similar. As an example, I've picked out three biologically relevant molecules, morphine, amphetamine, and dopamine, and I'm going to show you how you can go from the pKa values of these compounds to looking at the structures and evaluating factors that can be used to explain why one compound is a stronger base than another. And I'll also rank all three of these in terms of basicity based on that thinking. So I have three very important biologically active molecules drawn here, morphine, amphetamine, and dopamine. And I want to talk to you about how you can use chemical thinking to rationalize the relative basicity of these drugs, considering that they are all bases. So we're going to focus in on basicity. Given that we have the pKa values for these drugs, which is commonly reported for drug molecules, we very rarely see pKb values reported. So how do we interpret this information, and how do we look at the structures of these molecules to justify their relative basicity? Okay, let's start with the pKa values. We know that for drugs that are bases and amines, like all three of these are, amines because I've got this group here, and of course that there, and that there, all being amine functional groups, that the pKa values in general reported for amines are associated when the amine is protonated, so the conjugate acid of the amine. So in other words, the pKa for morphine is actually for the protonated version of morphine. For amphetamine, I would change this number to a 3 when it's protonated and put a positive charge on the nitrogen. And the same here for dopamine. I would change that to a 3, protonating that nitrogen. So those pKa values are the measure of the relative acidity of the conjugate acids. So we can say that morphine, when protonated, is the strongest acid. It has the lowest pKa value, followed by dopamine. And the weakest acid of these three would be amphetamine. So now, we know that the stronger the conjugate acid, the weaker the conjugate base. Therefore, we can conclude the following. We can say that because morphine has the strongest conjugate acid, it is the weakest base in its neutral form. So I'm going to put a 3 up here to indicate that that's the weakest base when that is not protonated. Therefore, dopamine is the second weakest base, or the second strongest base, since we only have three. And amphetamine, because the protonated version of amphetamine is the weakest acid, it is the strongest base when in its neutral form. So, back to basicity, how can we look at the structures of these molecules and rationalize the relative basicity. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw these molecules and get rid of the protonated version to justify the basicities. So I now want to take a look at the structure of the base form of these compounds and rationalize the relative basicity of them, knowing that amphetamine is the strongest base, dopamine the second strongest, and morphine the weakest. So when evaluating the relative basicity of amines, there are three main factors to consider. One factor is steric hindrance around the nitrogen of the amine. We know that the more accessible that amine is to being protonated, the stronger it is as a base. In other words, if I have a lot of large bulky R groups around that amine, nitrogen, like I do in morphine, which is a tertiary amine, meaning there's no hydrogens, just R groups attached to it, that means that the probability of that nitrogen being protonated is lowered because the access to that nitrogen is hindered by the presence of these large groups. So in the case of tertiary amines, sterics becomes a large and dominant factor. And in general, tertiary amines tend to be weaker bases than primary and secondary amines. Not all the time, but most of the time that is the case. And it's due to the steric hindrance that occurs in the tertiary amine. So we can say in this case that morphine is the weakest base due to sterics. The other two factors we have to consider, and we'll use these when we think about amphetamine and dopamine, are resonance stabilization and the inductive effect. Now, both of these 
can delocalize charge away from the nitrogen where the site of protonation occurs. In essence, what happens if that charge is delocalized away, that reduces the probability of that nitrogen being protonated and reduces the basicity. Now, in the case of both of these compounds, there is not a dominant resonance factor that we have in one over the other. So in this case, we're going to focus here on the inductive effect. And it turns out, if I take a look at the structure of dopamine, I see I have these two OH groups out here. And oxygen is an electron withdrawing group, which means that oxygen will delocalize charge towards it, pulling charge away from this end of the molecule, and in essence, delocalizing the electron density away from that nitrogen. That reduces the probability that that nitrogen will be protonated with respect to a molecule like amphetamine, which does not have electron withdrawing groups on the ring. And that will, in turn, make dopamine a weaker base than amphetamine. Now, amphetamine also has an additional inductive effect that lends towards its basicity. If I take a look at this carbon here, I can see that there are two carbons attached. In general, we consider carbon groups attached to carbons as electron donating groups in the inductive effect model. So that would have an additional inductive pushing of electron density towards this nitrogen. That increases the probability that that nitrogen will be protonated and in turn increases its basicity. Here, if we evaluate the carbon here that has the amine group attached, there, you can see here that there's hydrogens, not shown in the line structure of course, and only one carbon attached. So the inductive effect of pushing electron density is even less here in dopamine than it, than it is in amphetamine. So the inductive effect we would use to rationalize the relative basicity of dopamine versus amphetamine. So when thinking about bases, we think about sterics, resonance, and the inductive effect.